Hello everyone, I welcome you all for today's science session. In the previous class, you have learned about different eating habits of animals that is herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Today in this class, we are going to find an answer for an interesting question that is how do the animals eat? What are the special characteristics they have to eat the food or to catch their prey? You might have seen around you a cow or buffalo sitting and chewing continuously. What do they do actually? When they eat their food, they swallow the food without chewing. After they finish their food, they bring back the swallowed food into their mouth and chew them very well. This process is called as chewing the cud. Here, cud means the half digested food that is brought back to the mouth for further chewing. And these kinds of animals are called as cud chewing animals. Often you see insects like butterflies and bees sitting on the flower to suck the nectar. How is it possible for them to suck the nectar from the flower? They have a long coiled tube-like structure called proboscis which help them to suck the nectar. Just like you suck the juice from the glass using a straw. Isn't it interesting? You can see proboscis in bees and mosquitoes also. Mosquitoes use proboscis to suck the blood from the animals and human body. Cats and dogs lap up the milk or water with their tongue. They have a special pointed thorn like structures on their tongue which help them to lap up the liquids easily. Giraffes have a long neck which help them to reach the branches of tall trees to eat leaves. Rabbits, squirrels, rats eat nuts and seeds and you know that the nuts and seeds are very hard in nature. These animals have a strong sharp teeth in front to bite the nuts and break into small pieces. Some animals do not cut or tear their food. They can eat their food as a whole. A lizard moves quietly towards the insects and throws out its long and sticky tongue to catch the insect. It then quickly swallows the insect. Frog also catches and swallows insects in the same way. Then it rolls back the tongue into its mouth. But in a frog, the front part of the tongue is fixed and not the back. Usually snakes catch prey and swallow them slowly. Snakes eat small birds or small animals like rats, squirrels, etc. Python is a type of snake which can swallow the animals that are twice the size of its mouth. For doing this, it dislocates its lower jaw to open the mouth wider. Insects like grasshopper, worms, caterpillars feed on leaves. They bite and chew the leaves and survive. An elephant has a long thick trunk which helps it to break off branches and leaves. The trunk helps to push the food into its mouth and also for drinking water. A spider spins a web to catch its prey. It sucks the nutrients from the body of the insects when they are caught in the web. 
There are thousands of species in birds and each species has a kind of food habit and according to the food habit they, they have alterations in their beaks. Here I have shown some of the examples. Carnivorous birds have a very strong and curved pointed beak. It helps them to tear the flesh of other animals. Bird which catches fish from the water bed have a long and a flat beak so that their head remains out of water. The birds which eat seeds and grains have strong and very short beak. Birds eating fruits have curved and very delicate beak. To catch the insects, the birds will have a longer beak. And the birds which feed on nectar also have a longer beak so that they can suck the nectar from the flower easily. All the living things in nature are interconnected and the energy gets transferred from one to another. Plants prepare food by using sunlight and the energy of the sunlight is transferred to the animals which eat plants. From these animals, energy gets transferred to the carnivorous animals and it goes on. This can be shown in the form of a linked chain and is called a food chain. Here is a simple example for the food chain. The grass is eaten by a deer and deer is eaten by a lion. So the energy gathered from the sunlight is transferred from the grass to the deer and from deer to the lion. So there is a link between these three components. In a simpler way we can say that a chain which shows who eats whom is called a food chain. Here is one more example for the food chain. The grass is eaten by a grasshopper. Grasshopper is eaten by a frog. Frog is eaten by a snake. Snake is eaten by an eagle. And again as the eagle dies, it decomposes and mixes with the soil. It makes the soil fertile and it helps in the growth of plants again. So you can see the circulation of energy in nature. There is conservation of energy in nature. And when you observe all the food chains, it starts or begins with the plant always. And the plants are called producers. All the living things after plant are called consumers. And always it ends with the predators. Here is a worksheet for you. Fill in the blanks. First question, butterflies suck the nectar from flowers by using a long coiled tube-like tongue called as dash. The second question, a dash can swallow the animals that are twice the size of its mouth. The third question, a food chain always begins with a dash. The fourth question, grasshoppers feed on dash. Fifth question, a spider spins a dash. The second main you have to match the column A with column B. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.